Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the Weed Ives 910-037. That's right, its number is 910, and its name is 037. Yeah, we'll come back there. But anyways, um, first off, I want to thank very much my buddy Nehemiah over at the Metal Effort channel here on YouTube. He is a uh, relatively new YouTuber. Um, He's doing some really great work. You should check him out. But he's been loaning me knives. I've been loaning him knives. So, uh, you know, this was a part of our, uh, he's local to me, so a part of our last uh, trade up. And so thank you very much for that, Nehemiah. Next thing, size comparison. This is not a small knife whatsoever. Here it is against your Ontario rat number two. And your Spyderco Delica. This is big. Oh, my God, is this thing big. Um, Here it is against your Spyderco PM2. Yep, still big. Um, Handle-wise, it's actually not so far off from the PM2, but blade length, oh, boy, is this thing beefy. Let's go on ahead and uh, put this up next to a ruler here. We see we are coming in slightly over four inches. Um, that's, you know, so there you go. Um, this is a big freaking knife right here. And then finally, um, a quick note on the designer. This is a Kellen Bogardis knife. Um, he is a relatively new knife designer, but, um, he's got some really interesting ideas. And, uh, so yeah, this is his first collaboration with Wee Knives that I'm aware of. And let's go on ahead and talk about what's good, great, bad, and ugly about this very interesting little knife right here. So on the good side, fit and finishes, Wee Knives. I mean, it's good to go. They, they, they do a lot of really nice work, but they've got a nice stealthy in it. The, um, actually, if you look, you can see the machining marks on there, and then the anodization kind of shines through whatever uh, finish they're putting on the top of it there. It's sort of a acid -y anodization. Wee Knives does it well. It, it's reasonable. The blade finish on this guy is actually more attractive than Wee usually does. Very often, they're doing ugly kind of, uh, you know, uh, blade finishes, but this is uh, a little bit nicer. Um, and it's got a lock bar insert over travel stop. Overall, it's it's pretty damn well done. That's good. Next thing, as a very non-obtrusive lanyard hole, you've got a little lanyard hole pin down here, and you can just thread your lanyard through. Works great. No problem, but if you don't look for it, you never know it's there. Next thing, this has huge amounts of internal milling. If you watch my uh, disassembly video, you see just how much has been taken out of this knife. This is seriously internally milled. And as a result, the knife is surprisingly lightweight. Put this guy down on the scale here. We are coming in at four inches, I'm sorry, four ounces for about four inches of blade. That's pretty good. Um, and, you know, I got to say, the, the, the construction on it in general is pretty impressive because this has no visible screws from this side. Um, on this side, you've got the lock bar insert, screw the pivot, but then these other two screws are up here. And as you saw during the disassembly, these have sort of an interlocking area in the back here where parts of the, the, the two scales interlock together to create the knife. That, uh, so it feels very integral-ish in practice um, and looks very integral-ish even though it is two very distinct pieces here. So the construction on this guy is actually very, very impressive. Next thing, the ergonomics on this guy are great. This has really stellar ergonomics with a nice big sharpening choil. And the other big thing is that you don't feel the clip at all. That's because this clip is recessed down in there. That can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending. Um, but nevertheless, um, the ergos on this knife are very, very good. Uh, so that, to me, is what's good. The ergos are great. The construction is very unusual with huge amounts of internal milling, a non-obtrusive landed hole, and good fit and finish overall. On the great side, to me is the blade. This blade is very good. And I mean that in a couple of ways. First off, note this is not an after, uh, this is not the factory edge. I believe this is an aftermarket edge on this guy. Actually, this might be factory. I'm not 100% sure. And the EMI often does fa uh, aftermarket edges. But anyways, um, uh, this is a very nice blade regardless. It is an M390 steel, uh, which is a good thing to see. See here, it's labeled subtly back there. M390 steel. Um, has a very nice finish on it, but it is a super thin grind. We Knives is not only using blade stock that is reasonably thick here, but they are putting a super thin grind on it, such that at the tip, it is very... This knife cuts. Oh my God, does this knife cut? It is amazing. And that's the biggest thing that a knife should do is cut, and we has done that here. So I love it, love it, love it. Um, I want to see all of these knives just cut beautifully with nice thin behind the edge grinds. Just great. <coughs> So to me, at least, um, pardon me, I've been sick as a dog lately, if you're hearing that in my voice. But to me, that's what's great, is the blade on this is amazing. On the bad side, um, to start with, it's 280 bucks. Now look, I would argue this is probably more neutral. I mean, it's not a cheap knife, but there's a lot of machine time here. They've done a lot of weird things, so I'm not shocked that it's a little pricier than usual. I can live with that. Next thing, this is not the smoothest action I've ever had out of a wee knife. Um, I don't know what's causing that exactly. 
but it is maintained recently by myself. Hey, I don't know. I'm not super impressed with the action overall. Um, but maybe that's by design. Maybe that's... I, I don't freaking know. Either way, it's not the smoothest thing ever. Next thing, it is a little bit huge, and it is frustratingly right over a legal line. If you are in an area where four inches is the law of the land, this knife is not carryable because if you get your knife measured by a cop who decides they don't like the look of you, you will get arrested and or shot or whatever it ends up working out as. That's not a great thing. Um, the fact that this guy is huge is itself a little frustrating to me with my bias for smaller knives, but if you're going to make it huge, at least go either right under a legal line or just go for it. Make it 4.25. Hell, make it 10 inches. I mean, just go crazy. But it always bothers me when you're making something that is this big and that you're adding just that little extra to make it a little bit more illegal in a couple of places. Next thing, construction on this guy. Look, it's cool. It's strange, but I do worry a little bit because, you know, on most knives, you've got something like a um, barrel spacer here, right? I'm, uh, like right there. This little guy is the uh, Summit Knives Half Dome. Yeah, the screws are going directly into these backspaces. If you accidentally cross-thread a screw or strip out a screw, you replace a backspacer with a screw, you're good to go. On this guy, because he was screwing directly into this titanium here, if you cross-thread that and strip that out, your knife is dead. That's something I'm not a big fan of. It's cool. It's neat construction. It shouldn't come up too much, and if you're careful, it shouldn't be a problem, but mm, that's probably the downside of going this route certainly. Next thing, the um, clip on this guy is not amazing. I mean, look, it works. You can get it into your pants, but the problem is it is a relatively sharp tip, and the ramp on it is very low. Um, It's very hard to get this guy into your pants, and if you've got thicker material, you're going to have to kind of feed the material your pants underneath this. Um, Ergonomically speaking, this is a great clip, but I worry that this is just such a pain in the neck to carry that I don't care. Um, I would almost like a little bit more hot spotting in order for this clip to work a little bit better. I think the design isn't entirely out of line. Having the clip recessed might be a good idea, but you just need to do it a little bit differently than it was done here. So um, to me, at least, that's not great. And then, uh, so to me, that that is the um, bad here, is that it has a clip that just isn't great. The construction uh, could be a little vulnerable to damage. Um, it is a bit huge. It's not the smoothest action from we ever. It is a little pricey. On the ugly front, two things. To start with, guys, how hard did we fight to have we knives not name their knives numbers? And then what do you do? You name it a number. This is the 037, which is the we knives 910. Shoot me. I We have had this discussion. I thought we were past this. Um, So don't, no, just don't. Because I can't remember, right? Like, I, I filmed my entire disassembly without the ability to recall what this knife was freaking named. Maybe it's a super important number to the designer. You can weigh in there, but no. Just freaking no. I, no. So, um, they, 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 that's the first ugly thing. The other thing is, holy pocket pack of Batman. I mean, given certainly the way it's designed to carry, it's not as prominent as such, but this is a very sharp little flipper tab. And honestly, it's not super comfortable to use. It works. It's okay. But I'm just not a big fan of this flipper tab at all. I, 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 yeah. Not a big fan. I'd almost prefer a thumb stud or something on this. I don't know. But I, I just don't care for this flipper tab in the least. It is a pocket pecker par excellence. And that, that doesn't bring me any joy. So to me, that's the ugly is that you named a knife after a number. And then it's got a pocket pecker like freaking crazy on there. Final conclusions. This is a weird knife. I mean, at some level, look, the designer, of the, the Kellen Bogatis here has done some very, very strange stuff here. And I kind of like it. Clip is weird. The construction's weird. The amount of internal milling is really weird. And the name is, well, bizarre and not necessarily the greatest ways. Yet it is very well done. The action is solid. The ergos are great. The blade is very good. The construction is unusual, but I think in a very interesting way. It's unusual in a way that works pretty well. Sure, it's not the smoothest thing ever. It's certainly not the cheapest. It's weirdly huge. This clip just isn't really doing it for me for carry, and it is named after a number with a pocket pecker you wouldn't freaking believe. But I actually do think this would be a nice choice for a number of people. If you are looking for a high-end steel, if you're looking for a very big blade, if you're looking for a very thin grind, and if you're looking for very good ergonomics, honestly, this could be very nice. And especially given how lightweight it is, I can see a number of people being very, very happy with this. This kind of can replace the, if you've been interested in like a ZT452 or something like that, this could very easily replace that knife. Um, and feel a little bit higher end, a little bit more unique, a little bit more unusual, and frankly, a little bit more ergonomic. Um, this is a really, really nice... So I think that there are going to be a huge number of people for this, for whom this is a really compelling choice. 
it is definitely not for me. Not at this size. And frankly, I, I, the, the, the clip thing is a little bothersome to me. But the thing is... I do like it. I like the fact that this is weird. I like the fact that they're trying all these things, that it's lightweight, that it's thinly ground. There is so much that I do like about this guy, and it's just refreshing. It's different. It's weird. It's unlike a lot of what Wii is doing elsewhere in their life. I, I just, I appreciate that. And so I really, I, I like seeing this. I think even if this knife is not remotely something I'm interested in personally, it is something I'm interested in seeing more knives like it made. That's not a sentence. Um, And so I really, really like it. Good job, Kellen. Good job, Wee. And I really hope that this designer isn't going to be bogarting the rest of his unusual designs. Because uh, he's Kellen Bogartis? No? Okay. Uh, anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.